Hello. It's so great to see you again. It's been quite a week with Arthur's birthday celebrating his 95th year. Wow, I mean, that is such a milestone. And I am so happy for him that he is as good as he is today. I had a conversation uh, with some dog people in my neighborhood and it got me thinking about this topic today. So stay with me and we're going to have a great conversation. subscribers. I can't tell you how much it means to me that you decide to click on my channel and join in the conversations every week. Um, it really is awesome. We have a really wonderful community here. And if you've been watching my videos and you haven't yet subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe and join this wonderful community that we have here. Well, you know, I live in a community, South Beach. It's a mixed community of all ages. But one thing a lot of us have in common, and it is we have a lot of dogs. We have a lot of pets that we walk. And usually uh, most of us kind of have the same routine of walking our dogs. Uh, at night, the other night, uh, there were about three or four people that I met. We kind of crossed paths when we were walking our dogs. And the dogs kind of smell each other and they know one another. And we have become dog walking friends. And um, it's just so much fun. I'm the oldest one there, of course, and most of the women are in there. Well, I would see late, late 30s, uh, early 30s, maybe late 40s, some in the 50s. But anyway, we were... Uh, met, you know, and then we stopped to talk. I met with this one woman that I just absolutely love. She's an architect and um, she has the cutest two little pugs that are quite elderly now. And then when we were talking and a couple of other people came by, and you know how it is, you just start to talk. Well, uh, all of a sudden this other fellow who has a dog came by on his bike. He didn't have his dog and he stopped to talk to us. Well, I could have just been talking about my visit with the Queen of England, and he wouldn't have paid one bit of attention to me. His eyes were glued on all of the other younger women, and the conversation, you know, that he was, you know, was like fl fluffing his feathers. I could tell he was like peacock strutting because it was mating season. And I, I, I thought in a way, well, it, it gave me food for thought. No matter how young you feel you are, sometimes because of the way nature is, people are going to make you feel invisible, no matter how much self-esteem you have. And I think I'm pretty good about accepting who I am at my age and, and um, not feeling old. But there are certain times when just biologically, men are ready to mate, and so therefore they are looking for women who are younger. COVID has really hurt a lot of us, I think. Most of us have been, I know it has me, most of us have been in lockdown for since, well, the end of 19, I mean, 2019, 2019, 2019. And, and um, that can be very depressing. And you're just slouching around and you're lounging and because you know nobody's going to come in the house. You know that when you go out, uh, you can wear a mask and a big hat and nobody cares or sees what you look like. That This period, I think, has been so demoralizing for a lot of us. Maybe there are lessons that we have learned in our lives about paring down uh, how, how our consumption of things. But as far as taking care of ourselves, I think we all have to get back on track that 
we are going to be able to get out and conquer the world. And maybe we might have to wear a mask once in a while, but we really have to get back to living again. Honestly, we really have to get back to that. So I want you to think of all of these things and whether you value yourself as a woman, whether these principles can be applied to you as to whether or not and how you feel about yourself. It really is so important because I have said so often, how you feel about yourself actually is a reflection on how people look at you. I know women who have had uh, autoimmune illnesses. They have had arthritis. They have had physical things that have made them not the person that they used to be when they were 30 years old. But their sense of value is so high that you don't see any of these things when you meet them. You don't see them at all. All you see is an intelligent, self-aware, compassionate, kind human being who respects herself. And we can all work to attain that, can't we? And I was thinking about perhaps principles that we can live by to help us value ourselves and be a high value woman, no matter how young or old we are. So my thought process started to work and I thought, you know, number one, she knows her worth. I could have just shrunk there like a little tiny little violet in that group of people, but I know my worth. I know who I am, I know my accomplishment, and no matter how little or much attention I get, um, I don't operate from a place of neediness within myself or fear that I won't be recognized. I don't let the opinions and remarks of others set me back and go into my system, and I don't take them personally. Everyone has an opinion about something, don't they? They also have an opinion about women and aging and the type of women they like. It doesn't matter. I know who I am. The second principle is that I think a high value woman, woman she loves and respects herself. She doesn't accept less than she deserves in life. She is willing to walk away from a relationship if she is not being treated properly. Which reminds me of something I want to talk about that, that relates to this particular principle. There is a series on Netflix called The Maid. And if you have ever been in an abusive relationship, if you have ever been a single parent raising children. It's a limited series, only 10 episodes of this series, but once I got into it, I really was hooked because the acting was so, so great. Remember Andy McDowell? She used to be a model with a beautiful, you know, dark curly hair, and then she became an actress. Well, I think she's going to win an Emmy for this particular role. She was absolutely fantastic. She plays the mother in this uh, series. If you are interested in great acting, great fleshed out roles, and an interesting storyline that after each episode, you're surprised. I mean, it's absolutely not predictable, but it's called The Maid and it's on Netflix. And I really, really love this. And one thing about Andy McDowell, which I didn't realize, she is aging naturally and graceful. Her hair has a lot of gray in it. You can tell she's not had any work done on her face. So she would be probably one example that I can give you 
of a high valued woman. She knows who she is and she is not afraid to grow old gracefully. And she's not afraid if she's in any type of situation to walk away from him. That's not the character she plays though. But I know personally, uh, she is a very strong woman. Okay, that is the second one. The third one is something we talk about all the time. Being kind and compassionate. She knows, a high-valued woman knows the power of compassion and kindness. Everyone that she meets, she makes them feel better. She knows that words of kindness and compassion can go a long way to helping others feel better about your life, their lives. You know, we don't know when we see somebody at the grocery store or maybe sitting beside us, you know, or shopping at Target, whatever you're going to be doing during the day. We never know what's going on in their lives, do we? No, because people don't wear that on their shoulders or they don't want their feelings so that we can see them. So we never know what small word of compassion, maybe going to Home Depot looking for plumbing parts or plants. We never know what single word of kindness or compassion can really make someone's day, do we? And that is an example of being a high value woman, knowing being compassionate and being able to use that kindness and compassion to help others along the way. And it's free and it's so, so easy, isn't it? The next one is kind of tied into that. She is self-aware and empathetic. She has very high emotional intelligence. And what I mean by that is that she knows that her words matter and that her words will affect other people. A woman of substance is so careful about what she says to people and so careful about knowing the power of her words on others. And that really is a sign and of high emotional intelligence. And we all want to work to that goal. I know I did a video uh, several years ago in Nashville and it was all about emotional intelligence. And I'll put that link below so that you might want to watch that video on emotional intelligence. The next principle is that she is grounded in maturity. She doesn't have to play games with people. No matter who it is or no, if she's a single woman and she's dating, she doesn't have to manipulate somebody by waiting to answer texts. Or if she has children, she is not going to manipulate them by using their love for her or using the fact that they think she's smarter than they are. She is not going to use that uh, way to manipulate people at all. She is grounded. She knows who she is. And she is grounded knowing that she doesn't have to play games with anybody. And that ties in with the next one I'm going to talk about. She is not afraid to speak her mind. And that ties in with what I had just said. But also today, I think it's really difficult because everything has to be so politically correct that you have to think twice before you say anything because it may be misconstrued when you say something and what you're talking about. When she does speak, she knows it comes from a place of honesty, authenticity, and vulnerability. And in this principle, she can also express herself through areas of creativity, like painting, dancing, whatever she does that is creative. This is the way that she can speak and show that she is not afraid to express herself. And the last one here is that she takes care of herself. Now, I don't mean just 
physically, being sure that she's dressed appropriately. She always looks nice when she goes outside. But she takes care of herself emotionally and health-wise. Taking care of yourself shows a respect for who you are, a respect for your body, for your life, and taking care of yourself in all ways that you can to be sure that you are living the very best life ever. And it doesn't matter how young or old you are. Thank you for joining me on this conversation today. I, I really appreciate it. I want to thank you again for all of the wonderful comments on Arthur's birthday conversation I had with him. I read him every single conversation and and he was just over the moon. And thanks you all so very much. And I thank you too. I really appreciate your being here with me today. And I hope all of you have an absolutely fantastic week. And don't forget to look within yourself and be that high value woman that you are. Take care, be good to yourself, be kind to whomever crosses your path. And of course, let's all share the love. And I hope to see you in my next video.